Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Lifespan Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and impact of emerging science and technology. As rejuvenation biotechnology begins to take root, more and more biotech companies are joining the fight against aging. Let's get right into what has happened in research, development, investment, and advocacy in June. Starting off with our research roundup. Researchers publishing in the New England Journal of Medicine have been able to completely eliminate stage 2 and 3 rectal cancers with a single monoclonal antibody drug. If we leave out skin cancers, colorectal cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer in the U.S. According to the American Cancer Society, this year more than 100,000 Americans will get colon cancer and nearly 50,000 will get rectal cancer. In this new phase 2 study, 16 patients were recruited and 12 completed the treatment. 15 participants had stage 3 rectal cancer, and one had stage 2. At those stages, which represent the majority of cases, cancer is still mostly localized to the rectum and adjacent tissues, and the 5-year survival rate is around 70%. However, survival isn't the only concern. Current protocols usually begin with chemo and radiotherapy and then proceed to surgery. These treatments can negatively affect patients' quality of life and decrease their health span and lifespan, and rectum excision surgery is highly invasive and has harmful long-term consequences. In this study, the participants received dostrelimab, a PD-1 blocking monoclonal antibody agent, through injection every three weeks for six months. The researchers hoped that the drug would improve the participants' chances, but they certainly were not ready for what was to come. After receiving the antibody treatment, All patients demonstrated so-called clinical complete response, which means that there was no evidence of tumor. According to the researchers, such success is unprecedented in cancer research. Even six months later, none of the patients had required additional therapy. The well-known side effects of monoclonal antibody therapy were mostly mild. As spectacular as those results are, usual caveats apply. The results will need to be replicated in a larger study, and the clinical complete response endpoint does not equal total elimination of cancer. Additionally, the follow-up period was not enough to conclude that all patients have become cancer-free. However, immunotherapy for cancer is quickly becoming more effective and sophisticated. This study demonstrates for the first time that immunotherapy alone might be enough in some cases to suppress cancer, eliminating the need for more traditional therapies that can be taxing on patients. Scientists have shown yet again that adherence to the Mediterranean diet is positively correlated with longer and healthier lives, this time in a large-scale population study spanning 130 countries. The Mediterranean diet is one of the most well-researched in the world. It is heavy on olive oil, fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, and to a certain extent fish and wine. But it is light on dairy and meat. The Mediterranean diet has been linked to better health outcomes and increased longevity in numerous epidemiological studies and some large, randomized trials. This new study investigated the association between the Mediterranean diet and both lifespan and health span, the latter measured as health-adjusted life expectancy, which roughly means years spent without a major illness. Despite overall life expectancy continuing to rise in most of the world, the increase in health-adjusted life expectancy has been smaller, and the prevalence of diseases such as cardiovascular disease and diabetes has been growing. Instead of studying individuals, the researchers calculated a Mediterranean diet score, a metric of adherence to the Mediterranean diet for whole countries by analyzing their average per capita consumption of the relevant foods. This score is calculated on a scale of 1 to 9, with 9 signifying a complete adherence to the Mediterranean diet. Surprisingly, actual Mediterranean countries, excluding Morocco, were not among the leaders. Angola sported the highest score of 8, while both Greece and Italy only received 4. One possible factor could be that developed countries move away from their traditional diets and towards increased consumption of meat and heavily processed food. Nevertheless, after controlling for confounding variables, the scores showed unmistakable correlation with both life expectancy and health-adjusted life expectancy. Dietary interventions are among the handful that have a proven record of increasing health span and lifespan. 
According to the study, the score was positively associated with life extension and health-adjusted life expectancy in the cross-sectional analysis of data from 2009 and the longitudinal analysis of the period between 2009 and 2019, even after adjusting for variables such as socioeconomic status and health indicators. This important study shows just how powerful at least some elements of this diet are in different conditions and populations across the globe. Scientists have shown that blood donation strongly affects skin aging in mice. Before the dawn of modern medicine, bloodletting was one of the favorite tools of medieval doctors. Of course, it probably did more harm than good, especially in gravely ill patients, but could the idea have a grain of truth to it? Today, many people voluntarily donate their blood, saving the lives of others. There have been attempts by scientists to understand how blood donations affect the donor's health. One study links blood donation to a reduced risk of myocardial infarction and another one to a lower incidence of cancer. A single blood donation is equivalent to burning 500 calories. Finally, blood donation makes donors feel better about themselves, which can affect health as well. On the other hand, frequent blood donations may slightly increase the risk of coronary heart disease. However, these results were gathered from mostly uncontrolled population studies that could be heavily contaminated by healthy donor bias. People who donate blood are usually healthier than their age-matched peers, and they get screened for various health problems. This makes mouse studies unusually valuable because scientists can easily match the study group and controls in terms of health and age. In this new study, the researchers imitated blood donation by drawing blood from aging mice once every two weeks. As a result, the donors became much leaner than controls, with decreased body weight and fat percentages. The treatment also decreased the percentage of fat in the liver. Blood donation also improved skin condition. The thickness of the dermis and the collagen content of the skin substantially increased. Blood donation predictably led to a decrease in iron concentration, including in the skin. Iron plays an important role in aging. In general, this chemical element is toxic since it causes oxidative stress via increased production of reactive oxygen species. Interestingly, some humans can get rid of excess iron via menstruation, but iron and ferritin levels increase past menopause, which coincides with rapid skin aging. Blend donation can be seen as emulating this process. This might be the reason why one study recommends that older people continue donating blood into later life. Interventions involving blood, such as plasma dilution, have been shown to have geroprotective effects. Blood donation fits well into this picture. The current study poses a lot of intriguing questions, and it provides encouraging answers regarding the ability of blood donation to slow aging and the mechanisms involved. Hopefully, well-controlled blood donation studies in humans will be undertaken and reveal more details. That's it for our research roundup. You can find more on these and other stories on our website at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. You can also visit our website for some new interviews, including one with Natasha Vitamore of Humanity Plus, discussing the launch of the brand new H Plus DAO, which seeks to fund transhumanist and life extension projects. Last month, Science to Save the World released a follow-up to their video on using artificial intelligence to create a digital emulation of deceased humans, this time exploring some of the ethical concerns and impacts of this technology. They also released a very timely video exploring the relationship between music, memories, and identity as seen in season four of the Netflix series Stranger Things. We highly recommend heading to their YouTube channel to check out this video as it provides a bit of insight into some of the exciting things that the team here is working on when it comes to tackling Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Life Noggin also released some new content, including a look at the science and philosophy of exactly how many body parts you can replace. Here's what they had to say. Organ transplantation, where a damaged or failed organ is replaced with a working one, is one of the greatest advances of modern medicine that saves countless lives. In 2021 alone, over 40,000 organ transplantations were performed in the United States. Currently, there are six life-saving organs that doctors are able to transplant, the lungs, heart, liver, kidneys, pancreas, and intestines. Many other components of the body can be transplanted as well, including the uterus, arms, hands, and legs, and a number of different tissues like skin, different parts of the eye, and components of the musculoskeletal system. Imagine getting all of these replaced. You'd be like, half you and half all the other people. Oh boy, that's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Are you still you? 
I'll save that question for the end. But there are some organs that can't be transplanted, like the entire eye. While small parts like the cornea or screla can be transplanted, a whole eye transplant has never been done successfully. This is because of the complexity of the optic nerve, which consists of over a million tiny nerve fibers that would need to first stay alive after removal from the donor, then be reconnected to the recipient, and finally be able to rejuvenate and regrow from the eye to the brain. So far, scientists are unable to fully accomplish all of these steps, though they are hard at work at trying to find a way to do so, like by blocking genes to prevent the death of nerve cells and finding drugs that make them regrow. The brain has similar challenges. Scientists have yet to find a way to keep it alive after removal and establish a connection of the spinal cord to the recipients. Though, notably, one pair of surgeons have claimed that a whole body transplantation, in which the recipient's head is attached to a donor's body, is possible. And while their controversial plans to perform this operation on living humans fell through in 2019, they claim to have already transplanted the heads of mice and reconnected the spinal cords of a dog and a monkey. However, their studies and claims have been highly criticized for lacking evidence. But what if it did work and you can replace your entire body one day? Are you still you if most of your body is someone else? At what point do you stop being you. There is a thought experiment called the Ship of Theseus that asks a similar question about one's changing identity. If over time you replace every part of a ship, is it still the same ship that existed before? Meanwhile, Lifespan News published new episodes exploring the results of scientific studies on how NMN, vitamin B, and omega-3 fatty acids can impact health and longevity. They also released a video on the news that the Hevolution Foundation will have an annual budget of $1 billion to fund longevity science. Here's some of that video. The Hevolution Foundation, a nonprofit organization established by Saudi royal decree and receiving funding from the Saudi government, has publicly emerged and announced up to $1 billion a year to fund the science of increasing healthy human lifespan. Rumors about the Hevolution Foundation have been trickling out for a few years now, but the organization has been operating in a bit of secrecy. But now there's much more clarity, as the Hevolution Foundation has come forth and publicly introduced themselves in an article posted by Dr. Mahmoud Khan, who serves as their CEO. The article states that Hevolution Foundation is a pioneering new organization with a laser-like focus on dramatically improving a condition that affects every human on the planet, aging. Our mission is to drive efforts to extend healthy human lifespan, or health span, and to better understand the processes of aging. To this end, they have an annual budget of up to 1 billion US dollars to accelerate science and bring therapies to market. What exactly this money will be spent on is still unclear, but near the top of the list appears to be helping to fund the long-awaited Targeting Aging with Metformin trial, or TAME trial. Led by Dr. Nir Barzilai, TAME would test whether those taking the popular diabetes drug metformin experience delayed development or progression of age-related chronic diseases, such as heart disease, cancer, and dementia. The study has been in the works for years, with funding as the major remaining obstacle. The team at Lifespan.io has also made it a priority to get the TAME trial off the ground and may become directly involved with this in the days ahead, so be on the lookout for a potential announcement on that front. Another possible destination for some of this money, which was mentioned in a recent MIT Technology Review article from Antonio Regalado, would be funding a possible $100 million XPRIZE for age reversal technology. Longevity is something that XPRIZE has been eyeing for a while, and I expect some serious action, including the potential launch of this prize, in the near future. So who is behind this and why? Hevolution Foundation CEO Dr. Mahmoud Khan is a well-known leader in the longevity community. He's a founding member of the Longevity Biotechnology Association, which we covered in a previous episode, and serves as executive chairman of Life Biosciences, a company co-founded by Harvard's Dr. David Sinclair, seeking to develop therapeutics that can prevent, treat, or reverse multiple aging-related conditions. Previously, Dr. Khan served as global vice chairman and chief scientific officer of PepsiCo. The rest of the Board of Trustees and management team is composed largely of members of the Saudi royal family and Saudi officials. The chairman of the Hevolution Foundation is Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, son of the Saudi king and widely regarded as the de facto government leader. 
Other noteworthy members of the leadership include Russian billionaire and British peer Evgeny Lebedev, who controls media outlets such as the Evening Standard and the Independent, American billionaire businessman and part owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins Ron Burkle, and former CEO and chairman of Dow Chemical Andrew Laveris. So why is the Saudi government so interested in longevity? While in part this makes sense, given their claimed focus on future initiatives such as Saudi Vision 2030, which seeks to diversify their economy and invest in sustainability, healthcare, education, artificial intelligence, and robotics projects. Part of the motivation for some of these initiatives could also be to improve the image of Saudi Arabia and the Saudi government in the eyes of the international community. Beyond that, Dr. Khan's introduction article states that, there is evidence that Gulf Cooperation Council populations are aging faster biologically than they are chronologically. Despite the region having one of the youngest populations in the world, its people are experiencing higher mortality from chronic conditions like heart disease and diabetes. Hevolution's goal is health span equity, and we will devote the resources needed to achieve it. This region, with its history of generating founding principles in science and medicine, yet suffering from significant age-related risks, presents a strong case to be the catalyst for health span transformation worldwide. One concern we sometimes hear when discussing longevity is, what happens if an oppressive dictator never dies, and therefore holds power forever? This is a concern that might especially come up when we're talking about a single government, such as Saudi Arabia, investing in longevity technology. We previously released an episode of the X10 show explaining why this fear is misguided, but I do think it's one we'll continue to face and should have good answers for. In this particular instance, I want to see that Saudi Arabia is seeking to forward science to help everyone, not just their leadership and not just their country. Thankfully, that appears to be the case. Under the headline, A Transparent Global Organization, the Hevolution Foundation website states that, we seek to democratize science and knowledge. They go on to say that, we aim to work closely with global entities and research centers that share the same mission and objectives. Global success depends upon global collaboration, which lies at the heart of our mandate. While the organization is headquartered in the Saudi capital, they say there are hubs planned in North America, Europe, and Asia. This sounds great, but we as a longevity community and an international community should keep a close watch and make sure that these things do in fact happen. For anyone who is still skeptical or fears that Saudi advancements in this area will leave other nations behind, this is a great opportunity to encourage your own governments to invest in the fight against aging as well. Overall, I consider this great news. I'm a fan of anything that speeds up longevity technology, and I look forward to what's to come from the Hevolution Foundation. You can find these full videos on the Science to Save the World, Life Noggin, and Lifespan News YouTube and Facebook pages. Finishing things up with some news nuggets. First, Novos, a company that develops science-based products to slow down aging, announced results of two studies demonstrating that the combination of ingredients in its products, Novo's Core and Novo's Boost, protects against DNA damage and cellular aging. Next, June marked the first anniversary of Vita Dow passing its Gnosis token auction. Since its founding, the biotech Dow has invested over $2.5 million into over 10 longevity projects with the aim of driving early-stage research in the field. Finally, Molecule a comprehensive funding and incubation ecosystem for early-stage biopharma research, has raised nearly $13 million in seed funding. The round was led by North Pond Ventures. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related diseases. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about us on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuragrind.org. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. <laughs>